Whiteham. It's one of the few places in the world where the first ecologists a century ago began to formulate their theories of how ecosystems work, how plants and animals interact. And that has led to a rich history of understanding and insight from Whiteham that has gone on to feed into our understanding of ecology of the planet as a whole. establish the carbon budget of the forest, for the whole forest. So um, the ultimate aim is that we would understand how much carbon we have currently stored in the trees and in the soil, but also how much carbon is coming in uh, when the trees grow and how much carbon is going out when dead things decompose. Our aim is to both understand Whiteham in itself, but also to use Whiteham as a node of a global network of sites where we do these types of measurements, and it's, it's our local European node. One other part of the work we're doing at Whiteham is trying to understand how much of the forest's ecology and function we can map from above the forest, either by aircraft or ultimately uh, by satellites. And uh, we do this by, firstly, from the towers and the walkways, we put up sensors to try and monitor the forest canopy. Over this year, uh, we, are, we are going to be flying aircraft over Whiteham with both uh, lasers that will bounce off the forest and measure the structure of the forest in exquisite detail. And at the same time, with a type of sensor called a hyperspectral sensor that measures hundreds of different wavelengths of light. And from that, in principle, you can actually work out the chemistry of every tree that you're looking at. The reason we do this work is ultimately to see to what extent can we map the functioning of the biosphere, the health of the biosphere, at a larger scale. My research group has similar plots uh, all over tropical countries. So I also work in Borneo and lots of my colleagues work in the Andes and in the Amazon region and also in Africa. Obviously the working conditions here are really easy so you can just uh, cycle from Oxford and then spend a day here and then go back home at the end of the day. In Borneo we do have snakes and we do have lots of leeches and they are those land leeches so they are all over the forest floor. But um, Brighton is not a sleepy little place. We have stinging nettles and mosquitoes, <laughs> bramble. Yeah, it doesn't really compare to the tropics. I think uh, one thing that over the years uh, I've become to appreciate more and more is how much the woodland is changing all the time. Uh, we look at this and we may imagine that, that Whiteham a decade ago looked the same, or five decades ago, or a century ago looked more or less the same, that somehow woodlands are timeless when the world around is changing. But what we've come to see from the richness of the historical record at Whiteham is that these woodlands have completely transformed decade on decade. But we also need to worry about human impact on the forest. The sheer number and intensity of people altering the landscape is much larger than anything in, in, in human history. And so the pressure we're putting onto natural ecosystems is also much greater. I think through my research I've come to see forests in, in some different ways. I often see them as cycles and rhythms of processes, so of flows of carbon and nutrients and water. So I think what a, a scientific eye can do is give you new glasses to look at, at nature. The more you understand the delicious complexity of the forest and the processes going on beyond your immediate vision, the more you, you come to, to love and appreciate the forests.